Hi guys, welcome to Learn to Fly Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here, my name is Clement. And today, we're going to show you guys a pre-flight inspection on a Sling 2 aircraft. In this pre-flight video, we're going to check the cabin first. What we'll be checking in the cabin is all the switches are off, all the, in all the required documentations are on board, and the cabin itself is well organized. After the interior is checked out, we're going to move on to the exterior. Starting from the left hand side fuselage, and then we'll check the tail section of the aircraft, which is also known as the empennage. We'll work, we'll work around the tail to the other side of the fuselage, and on to the right wing and the landing gear assembly. After the right wing, we're going to move on to the nose section, which includes the engine and the propeller, which is the most important part of the uh, whole aircraft, which we have to be very careful. After that is checked out, we're going to move on to the left wing. We're going to be a pitot tube, the fuel, and the lights. After those have been checked, and if we're happy with the general condition of the aircraft, we can jump in, start up, and enjoy the flight. Your pre-flight inspection starts when you are walking out to the aircraft. When you approach the aircraft, you should visually check the airplane for the general condition, and it should be parked in a normal ground attitude. If the wings are not level or dropping to one side, look at the tyres, there's a possibility that the tyre is flat. We will start off by removing the canopy cover and the air duct cover so we can get inside the cabin to start the inspection. Part of the cabin inspection is to remove the pitot cover. The pitot cover is on to block any insects, debris or any foreign objects from entering the pitot tube. It is very important to remove the pitot cover before flight as well as placing it back on after the flight. To get into the cabin, use the handlebar and the footstep to get on the black portion of the wing. To open the canopy, twist the handle clockwise by 90 degrees and slide it backward. One of the first things we check before we enter the aircraft, or after we've just entered the aircraft, is the documentation of the aircraft. So we've got the aircraft folder from the dispatch room from Lunar Fly. Inside this folder, it has the certificate of the registration of the aircraft, it has the trip sheet, and the maintenance release. We have to make sure they're on board before we go flying. We also have to check the maintenance release. It's up to date. It's a correct plane, which this one is saying PPY. PPY. On the section one of the maintenance release, is the maintenance required. We'll be checking if there's any maintenance due now that would stop the plane from flying. And the last part is the daily inspection. After we've inspected the aircraft, we'll be, it will be signed by a licensed pilot so we can go flying. For the trip sheet, or what we call the running sheet, essentially is a record of the trip that the aircraft has done. So before we go flying, we'll fill in today's date your instructor's name, your name, and the current hours of the aircraft. After the flight, you finish off with the finishing hours of the aircraft and the remaining of the items. Another important item to check is the pilot operating handbook. In the Sling 2 aircraft, it is in the forward compartment here. So that's the pilot operating handbook. It contains the information about the aircraft, including pre-flight inspection, uh, any procedures, normal procedures, emergency procedures, and some of the performance data of the aircraft. After we have checked the documents, we put it in the rear, and now we can pull out the checklist and proceed with the cabin checks. We will start off with the instrument checks inside the cabin. To initiate the instrument checks, we'll first turn on the master, then check the magnetos are in the off position. Then we'll turn on the EVIS-1, EVIS-2 and the avionics to check for the normal functionality of the radio. We will turn on all the lights to ensure they're working. After EVIS-1 and 2 has been started up, we'll proceed to check the system normality. We'll start with the Garmin G3X. By tapping on the engine indication system bar on the left, it'll open up the engine page. 
In this page, we'll be able to check the current engine time and the fuel quantity on board. We'll then check the secondary EVIS, which is the Garmin G5. After EVIS and the radio has been checked, we can turn the avionics off, so as the EVIS 1 and 2. We'll then conduct the exterior light inspection. In the exterior light inspection, we'll first check the taxi and landing lights are both on. On the left wing tip, if the aircraft is fitted with a nav light and a strobe light, you should see a steady red light and a flashing white strobe. If the aircraft is fitted with a tail strobe light, then you should be seeing a flashing white strobe light. On the right wing tip, if the aircraft is fitted with a nav light and a strobe light, you should be seeing a steady green light and a flashing white strobe. It's important to point out that some of the aircraft may not have fitted with some lightings because they are not compulsory in day VFR flight. Once all the light has been inspected, we can return to the cabin to turn it all off. While we are inside the cabin, we'll lower the flaps for the flap inspection later in the pre-flight. After the flaps are lowered, we'll turn off the electric master and continue our preparation for the cabin. We'll start with the seat adjustment. To do that, we'll have to move the adjustment tab which is at the front side of the seat. What you want to ensure is the seat is locked in place, which you should hear a click when it is. After adjusting the seat, we'll get inside the cabin. To get inside safely, firstly, place your left hand on the canopy and step on the base of the seat. After that, reach over for the support beam with your right hand and carefully place your leg in the footwell of the aircraft. We will then inspect the condition of the harness, check for the security of the attachment and the operation of belts and buckles. To operate the four-point harness, firstly, place the shoulder belt on your shoulder and the left belt on your lap. Combine the shoulder belt together and allow the clip to go through in the middle of the shoulder belts. Buckle up with the other side of the lap belt and then check for the security of the harness. And that is the operation of the safety harness on the Sling 2 aircraft. After checking the harness, we'll move on to check the control system. Move the control and inspect the corresponding control services are moving in the correct order. We'll slide the canopy forward to check the canopy for normal functionality, such as sliding and locking mechanism. We'll then verify the fire extinguisher is present. It is located under the right side of the pilot seat. After completing the checks in the cabin, we'll move on to check the fuselage. We'll start off by checking the wing route, followed by the fuselage itself. Check the wing route bearing is in place and secured. On the fuselage, what we'll be looking for is the service condition. We will look for any dents, cracks or deformations, generally looking for any abnormalities. We will then check the antenna is securely attached and undamaged, so as the empennage bearings. And that is the left side of the fuselage inspection. We will conduct the exact same inspection on the other side after we have completed the inspection on the empennage. The empennage, also known as the tail section of the aircraft, consists of a couple of components, including the horizontal stabilizer, the elevator, the vertical stabilizer, and the rudder. We're checking the general condition of those services as well as the mechanical linkage. And that will be the check for the empennage. You can start by looking at the surface condition of the whole empennage to ensure there are no damage or missing rivets. Then we'll move on to check the surfaces physically one by one. You can start with the horizontal stabilizer. Checking the surface and the leading edge. You can then move on to the elevator to ensure the elevator is able to pivot full range of motion without any difficulties. At the same time, we can check for the nuts and bolts are in place on the elevator. It is also very important to ensure the push-pull rod is connected and is in good working order. Check the rudder cables are attached on both sides securely and are undamaged. At the same time, remove the tie-down rope of the aircraft and place it on the ground. At the rear end of the elevator is the electric trim tab. You can inspect the trim tab assembly by looking underneath the trim tab. Or we'll then check the mechanical linkage of the trim tab by moving the elevator up and down. Move your way up the vertical stabilizer. Check for the surface condition and the required nuts and bolts are present. So as the other side of the rudder, checking for the surface condition and the bolt. Again, check the full range of motion of the elevator, check for the required nuts and bolts that connect the elevator to the horizontal stabilizer.
check the surface and the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer. After checking the amp notch, we will check the general condition of the right side of the fuse lodge, which includes the surface condition, whether there are any missing rivets or deformations. Finish off by checking the wing root fairings are attached securely to the fuselage. The fourth part of the pre-flight inspection on the Sling 2 aircraft consists of the right main wing and the right wheel and tyre assembly. We'll be checking the flaps, the aileron and the wing condition, also the fuel. We'll start off with the tyre and the brake assembly. Check the wheel strut condition. Look for any deformation. Looking down from the strut is the wheel and brake assembly. We have to check for the general condition of the tyre, look for flat spots, tread depth and the inflation of the tyre. Caliper assembly is securely attached and the brake pads have enough thickness for the flight. Once we have checked the wheel and brake assembly, we'll check the flaps. Firstly, check the service condition of the flaps. Gently move the flap up and down from the trailing edge. There will be a small amount of movement. Check the security of the push-pull rod and the hinges. Look for the marking on the nuts and bolts to ensure they are secured. We can now check the aileron. We need to check for the general condition and the security. There is an inspection window for the push-pull rod of the aileron. Gently twist the rod to check for a small amount of movement. Check on the hinge assembly and confirm security. When moving the aileron, the opposite aileron will be moving in the opposite direction. After checking the aileron, we can move on to check the wing tip. The general condition of the wing tip is undamaged. Check the general surface condition of the whole wing, starting with the leading edge. While we are here, remove the tie down strap. Continue the wing inspection from top down to bottom, free of deformation, crack or rust. We will then check the quantity of fuel. Open the fuel cap and use the dipstick to verify the fuel quantity. Insert the dipstick vertically downward and bring it out to read the quantity of fuel and place the fuel cap back on. After checking the quantity of fuel, we'll be checking for the quality by draining a small sample of fuel with a fuel drainer. We'll be looking for water, sediment and proper grade of fuel before the first flight of the day and after each refueling. FGAS 100 low lead should be light blue in colour and the sample we drained has passed the visual inspection and that will be the end of this part of the pre-flight. After completing the inspection on the right wing and the right main gear, we'll move on to the nose section of the aircraft. In this section, we'll be checking the level of different kind of fluids such as oil, coolant and brake fluid. We'll also be checking the engine itself including the propeller and the spinner, the two radiators and different kind of air ducts and that will be the inspection for the nose section. Check the air inlet on the side are not obstructed. Then we'll open the inspection hatch with a flathead screwdriver to check the general condition of the engine bay and the level of different kinds of fluid. The pink fluid in the cube is the coolant the level of the coolant has to be between the maximum and the minimum marking on the reservoir. The red fluid next to it is the brake fluid. We have to ensure it is sufficient for the flight. The silver container is the oil sump. We'll open a cap and check the oil quantity with a dipstick to ensure the oil is sufficient for our flight. The recommended oil level is the oil should be more than half of the dipstick. After checking the oil level, we'll put the oil cap back on looking for leakages inside the engine bay. After checking the level of different kinds of fluid, we'll close the inspection hatch. Moving on to the propeller. Before we inspect the propeller, we should ensure the electric master and the magnetos are all off. We'll be checking for any nicks or dents on the front and the back of the blade, both leading edge and trailing edge on all three blades. Twist the propeller by holding onto the hub portion of the propeller and there should be no movement at all. We'll then check the general condition of the spinner, also looking out for any missing screws or damage. Moving on to the front air inlet, we have to ensure that it is undamaged and free of obstructions. We'll also check on the general condition of the radiators. We'll be looking for any damage, leakage or blockage 
from foreign objects on the radiators. Beneath the radiators is a nose gear assembly. Start off with the general condition of the nose gear fairing and the strut. To inspect the nose gear, we will be checking the tyre for proper inflation and tread depth. Moving on from the nose gear, we will open up the inspection hatch on the other side of the nose. To inspect the exhaust manifold and the various components on this side of the engine bay are securely attached. After the engine bay inspection, we will close it back up with a fuel drain and inspect the last air inlet and the outside air temperature probe is free of blockage. After completing the inspection of the nose section, we can now move on to the final part of our inspection, which is the left wing and the wheel and brakes assembly. We'll start off with the leading edge, we'll dip the tank, check the fuel by draining the fuel, go around the wingtip, check the aileron and the flaps, last but not least, the wheel and brake assembly. We will start the inspection on the left wing by checking the general condition of the leading edge and the wing surface. There should be no dents or damage throughout the entire wing. Work your way to the taxi and landing lights and check for their security, making sure no screws are missing. We will then check the pedal tube, look for any blockages inside of the tube and its security. Looking into it to ensure no bugs or debris is contained inside of the pedal tube. As we are moving outward, we should make sure the aircraft is untied before flight. We will then drain a portion of fuel to check for the quality of the fuel drainer. We will be checking for the presence of water, sediment and proper grade of fuel before the first flight of the day and after each refueling. FGAS 100 low lead should be light blue in colour and the sample we drain has passed the visual inspection. We will then check the quantity of fuel by dipping the wing tank with a dipstick. To check the quantity of fuel, insert the dipstick vertically downward and bring it out to read the quantity of fuel and place the fuel cap back on. We'll inspect the tip of the wing to check for the security of the nav and strobe lights. From there, move on to check the aileron. Firstly, we'll check the surface condition of the aileron is normal and without deformation. We'll then check the free movement of the aileron by moving it up and down. As you perform this check, the opposite aileron will be moving in the opposite direction. Looking into the small inspection window for the push-pull rod of the aileron, gently twist the rod to check for a small amount of movement. After checking the aileron, we'll be checking for the surface condition of the flap. Gently move the flap up and down from the trailing edge, and there will be a small amount of movement. Check the security of the push rod. Look for the marking on the nuts and bolts to ensure they are secured. We'll then check the underside of the aileron and the flap. Checking the hinges, nuts and bolts are all in place securely. Check the flap flange assembly for any cracks, damage or rust. Finally, we can move on to the main gear and brake assembly. Check the wheel strut and tyre connection. Look for any red fluid on the ground for potential leakage of brake fluid. Move on to check the brake assembly. You can see the rotor is straight and undamaged. Caliper assembly is securely attached and the brake pads have enough thickness for the flight. And that concludes our pre-flight inspection on the Sling 2 aircraft. Now before we go flying, we have to make sure the daily inspection has been signed and completed, also with all the documentations on board. If you are doing your pre-flight inspection on the Sling 2 aircraft, be sure to have your checklist with you at all time, so you know exactly where you are on the aircraft. If you find anything that you are unsure about or don't know what to do, always go and ask your instructor.